East Report with James Dorsey on Sabahul Muslim. James, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. It's always a pleasure. Now, time may be running out for Israel with pressure for a ceasefire in Gaza mounting. Uh, that's bad news for Israel, irrespective uh, of, of the human cost that it's inflicting on Gaza and the damage to its infrastructure. Uh, it seems like Hamas is likely to emerge a winner uh, as long as it survives the fighting. Indeed. So what we're seeing is a build up to some form of maybe not a ceasefire and not an end to the war, but sort of intermittent or regular uh, pauses that would allow for the um, departure of civilians from northern Gaza to southern Gaza. But all of this is really part of a building up pressure on Israel to uh, agree to a, a longer term ceasefire. The reason why Israel uh, re rejects that and why in, in some ways it's supported uh, in that by the United States is that Israel's objective in this war is to totally destroy Hamas, which means if Hamas survives, no matter how much damage has been done to its leadership and to its infrastructure, survival is a victory. And that's clearly something that neither the United States nor, nor that neither Israel nor the United States wants uh, for reasons both of in terms of militancy, but also in terms of Iranian prestige. But on the other hand, time is running out because the pressure is building up. Now, the Israeli military seems to be discovering that Hamas's tunnel network is vaster than, uh, than what was originally assumed. Uh, and this discovery seems to suggest that the heaviest fighting uh, is, is yet to come, and that would naturally raise concerns about the safety of the 240-odd uh, hostages that are held by Hamas. Indeed. So, so essentially, in the, the Israelis are discovering that the network is far uh, wider and far more extensive than they have uh, en envisioned. And, of course, uh, Israel has not yet really entered the core of Gaza City, which is much more narrow streets, much more difficult for uh, armored vehicles, tanks, and so on, and w is likely to involve, or uh, could involve, a far, far greater degree of uh, direct confrontations between Hamas fighters and Israeli troops that we're already seeing happening. Uh, and the problem with that, of course, is that that mitigates towards a longer war whereas the likelihood is that we're moving towards some form of uh, at least partial ending of the, uh, of, the, of the fighting. And that's where you get into what, are, what, are, what should Israel's tactics be. Um, and I think there's you know, increasingly pressure from the United States to move away from an invasion of Gaza, uh, perhaps find uh, through hostage release a, um, a fig leaf that would allow the Israelis to withdraw uh, some of its ground forces and to focus the fight much more on targeted raids or targeted killings so that you don't have this massive uh, destru further destruction of the, uh, of the strip. Now, the siege of Gaza complicates negotiations to release at least some of the hostages, according to a former Israeli hostage negotiator, who's one of uh, a few. It is not, uh, if not the only Israeli to have contact with Hamas. He, he says that he has had no response to messages for the past week, and this seems to suggest that the group has um, difficulty communicating with the outside world. Well, I think what... Gershom Bashkin, uh, who is the, the former negotiator and who negotiated the release in 2011 of Gilad Shalit, the Israeli soldier who was um, uh, exchanged for 1,027 Palestinian prisoners, including uh, the four killers of uh, Bashkin's uh, wife's cousin, 
who was kidnapped before and tortured it, before uh, uh, Gilad Shalit was captured. Uh, the problem, what, what you're seeing right now is enormous movement, whether it's a motion without movement or not, when re- needs to be seen, needs to be seen in terms of some sort of partial hostage release. Uh, Islamic Jihad has said that it's willing to release an elderly Israeli woman and an Israeli te- uh, teenager. Um, you had an, you know, an unprecedented visit, really, at least for many years, of the Isra- of the head of the Mossad, the Israeli secret intelligence service, to Doha. Qatar has no diplomatic relations with uh, with Israel for a meeting with the Qatari prime minister as well as the um, head of the CIA. And you're seeing the emir of Qatar in Egypt today, together with leaders of, the Ham- of Hamas. The real question is, uh, to who can talk to Gaza, sorry, to Hamas in Gaza? It's not the leaders like Ismail Haniyeh who call the shots. The shots are called from within Gaza and for all practical matters, as much as Gershom Bashkin has difficulty communicating with uh, the leadership in Gaza, so does the exiled leadership of Hamas. Uh, and it may very well be that uh, the Gutteries, and particularly the Egyptians, who of course have a border with Egypt, may be the ones with real access. And then finally, the U.S. seems to be worried that Israel has no real st- uh, exit strategy when it comes to Gaza. The assertion by Netanyahu that Israel will maintain security control indefinitely raises more questions than it provides answers. Indeed. Um, so, th- And you've seen this already in terms of, for example, uh, the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's uh, comments uh, the day yesterday or the day before yesterday in uh, Seoul and in Tokyo, in which he clearly laid out uh, markers. With other words, he uh, made clear that the United States would not tolerate the expulsion of um, Palestinians from Gaza, uh, would not, uh, that Israel needed to rein in settlers on the West Bank. Uh, and all of this is linked to, uh, and, and you've also, of course, heard uh, that the United States wants an immediate emphasis on a final two-state solution uh, to the Pal- Israeli-Palestinian conflict once the guns fall silent. And all of this is concern about what happens when, um, uh, if and when Israeli troops withdraw from Gaza. Uh, do you get a return of Hamas? Uh, and is Hamas capable of returning at that point? Uh, clearly, the United States and Israel don't want that. But the, any other solution, wh- whether that would be a homegrown uh, Palestinian leadership that is not Hamas, homegrown in Gaza, or whether that would be the Palestine Authority, is going to have to be linked to real movement towards a two-state solution. And that is virtually impossible with the current Israeli government. And that's the catch-22 in this. Absolutely. James, as always, thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. All right. That is uh, this week's Middle East Report. Two minutes to eight.